and welcome back to IBM's Information on Demand conference. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of IOD. Hashtag is IBM IOD. This is theCUBE, our program. We've got the advanced extractive signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, our co-hosts, and uh, Darren Nelson, Vice President of Solutions Sales at Sirius Computer Solutions. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. The largest IBM reseller in the world, is that right? We are, that true that? statement. That's awesome. That's, that's a big accomplishment. <laughs> Um, so you must get the you must get treated well from IBM. Get some nice soft dollars, you know, schmoozing customers, big customers. Um, you're in the trenches. So let, my first question is, um, okay, give us the reality. Big data analytics and social business. Which one has got traction, or both? Or do you, does it have traction? Are they? Is it is it just now getting traction? Give us the give us a straight scoop. Yeah. So I would say um, there is probably equal amount of activity in both but there's more POs being cut for analytics and big data. Um, social in and of itself is, um, there's a lot of interest and hype and customers are really trying to understand how they can leverage these tools to augment the solutions that they're bringing to their customers, whomever they might be. Um, but social in and of itself, people are not just investing in social without it being a part of some bigger solution. And the activity that you're seeing in big data and analytics is, is now beyond Proof of concept, right? You go oh yeah, production. yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe we could talk about that a little bit, because you know, a year or so, even a year ago, it was sort of kicking the tires. Proof of concepts. What's happened? We're leaving that phase, and how are people going into into production? What, what are you seeing? You, you know, I think we're fortunate to work in an industry that is extremely dynamic. I mean, every three months, there's some crazy buzzword that people start talking about. You know, cloud, client-server computing, second life, and big data and analytics fell into that, but. What I think we're seeing is after people started proving out that they actually were running a more profitable and more efficient business when they had facts based on how their businesses were performing, they were starting to invest. I mean, there's studies done that say customers that are investing in analytics and using a fact-based fact business approach, they're 20 times more profitable than those that do not. And so. Um, it's really become the price of entry at this point. For those customers that are not investing in analytics and, and making decisions based on facts, they're behind the eight ball. They're, they're at a competitive disadvantage. So I think it's reality now. So, so what's, your, uh, what's your observation space, to use a John Furrier, Jeff Jonas line? Wh wh where do you sell into? Is it sort of U.S.? Is it you particular regions trying to understand that? Yeah, so I'll give you just a, a little bit of background. So. So Sirius actually was founded in 1980, it predominantly is an IBM hardware reseller. And uh, so for three decades, selling IBM infrastructure essentially, um, about seven years, six years ago, uh, Sirius acquired my company. I was IBM's largest software reseller and systems integrator in the northeastern part of the US, and they asked me to help transform the company into being more software and software services capable. In a three-year period, we tripled our IBM software business and became IBM's largest software reseller on the planet, even though we only sell in the U.S. Mm. So we only sell in the U.S. In 2011, we actually finished the year with IBM software being our number one brand. After three decades of predominantly being an IBM hardware reseller, IBM software now became our number one brand. So long answer to your question, we sell U.S., but, but what this enabled us to do was to have a high value conversation with our customers, not around just implementing infrastructure, but what are the business challenges that you're facing? Where do you want to go? And we can then employ the right hardware, software, and services to enable our customer to meet those businesses. That's a total transformation, right? Because it's, you, as you know, being in this business for a long time, it's always the, it's a, the application that you know, connects the infrastructure to the business. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah, if you figure that out, yeah, yeah, we got some infrastructure too, that's not a problem. So what are you, what are you proposing to customers? Is it the, is the whole, I mean, IBM's portfolio is a, complicated to a lot of people. Is it, are you selling the whole portfolio? Are you primarily selling, for instance, Cognos? When we could talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sure. So we are fortunate to be able to resell the entire IBM software stack in excess of 5,000 products. Wow. We're not experts in all those, mm -hmm. but we can resell them. The hot spots that we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of activity in the enterprise market management space. So Tea Leaf is just a tremendous product in that space, providing a, a kind of analytics around customer experience optimization. That, that is white hot for us right now. We're also seeing quite a bit of activity in um, the analytics space, really around um, um, the, the business intelligence, business analytics. Uh, we're actually seeing a lot of activity in the retailers around social analytics. You know, really trying to understand customer sentiment, hot words trending, 
um, to be able to make very effective marketing decisions. I mean, think about what it used to take to understand how uh, the market was perceiving your brand or your customer service. You know, you'd employ a third party to do some sort of study and three months later you'd get an answer back and then have to put plans in place. Right now our customers are able to very quickly in real time take a look at how they're trending, what kind of, what are the, is the market perceiving them to be in certain areas and be able to make decisions, whether it be marketing decisions or damage control decisions. So that's been really hot. From a social perspective, let me just finish yeah, on yeah, social. Go, social we're seeing now people layering social on top of these business areas, these business solutions to, to really accelerate the value and, and increase the value of the solutions that they're providing. We have a customer, for example, they're a, a $6 billion automotive retailer, and they had all of their, their records around their automobiles in paper copy. And they decide, you know what, we gotta do, be more efficient in this, we gotta be more effective with this, we're gonna put this in the IBM records management system they realize it's providing them so much um, benefits and economies to their business, they're now putting everything in that environment and exposing that through social technologies. WebSphere Portal, for example, enabling people to collaborate on that. And now adding connections to that so they can build communities and enable people with special interests to be able to collaborate on those topics. And also being able to use connections for expertise location, maybe one uh, seller in the West Coast is needing to sell a Hummer and he's run into this one objection, well he can actually find who the Hummer expertise is across their entire company and tap be able to it. tap into it and in real time respond to yeah, those Yes, so I, I see huge potential there for overlaying, if you will, that social experience. And we were just talking earlier about how the whole user experience has got to change, it's yeah. got to become more social. Now, will you guys do integration at Sirius? Do you rely on IBM to do that? Is it a hybrid? Yeah, so, um, it's very difficult to sell this technology if you don't have the skills to implement it. So we absolutely, uh, you know, I've, we've built in excess of 100 engineers that do nothing but implement the, the IBM software stack that I referred to. So we not only architect and sell it, we implement it for our customers. So how's that work with IBM services, right? Big services company, they do a lot of implementation and integration. You obviously have expertise. Um, how's your relationship there and how does that all work out? We have a tremendous relationship with IBM. There's actually, there's a portion of the market that um, frankly we're probably better served to, you know, we have a pricing structure and, and um, possibly a bit more nimble than uh, the big IBM GBS can do. Um, so the, the very large, big, big stuff, Global we, leave, stuff, yeah, right we leave to IBM and GBS. But for anything below that, we, we play very heavily in that space. There's scenarios where IBM even subcontracts our resources to work with them, leverage our expertise, and vice versa. We subcontract them where we're, you know, our bench is completely Under your deployed. brand. Yeah, under our brand, absolutely. So you mentioned that the, the customer experience optimization, the tea leaf stuff is white hot. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about what's driving that and what you guys are doing with customers. Sure. So. Um, I'll give you a quick, a quick analogy. So I'm a hockey goalie dad. Okay, very stressful position to be. You always hate when your kids in net. You know, oh my Crazy. Gosh. All the other parents yell, "Siv!" <laughs> if I don't get a substance abuse problem from this, I won't get it for anything. I mean, it is, it is absolutely. Uh, a cr my, I'm, I'm that dad that videotapes my son in net so that we can, if he made a mistake, we can review it. He let in this goal, couldn't understand how this goal went in. He was in perfect position, perfect technique, couldn't understand it. We went to the videotape and we could see that he was hanging his glove. He was hanging his glove and it, it, went, it went over his glove. Instead of him attacking, tea leaf is like the instant replay of a customer experience. It enables our customers to actually understand struggles that their customers may be having, whether it be through a mobile experience or a web experience, and be able to actually relive that and replay that exact customer experience. So you can see, oh, they're abandoning our cart. Here's why. You know, I'll give you a, a, a recent scenario. We did a demonstration to a, a retailer, actually in the Nebraska area. Got so excited about it, he ran out of the room, grabbed his CEO, CEO came in, sat down, saw it, said, gotta have it. Seven days later, got a PO for the product. Had it implemented in eight days, it paid for itself inside the first quarter. Here's how. They couldn't understand why people were abandoning their cart. And they, what they were able to do is see the trends, see the analytics around it, and then actually replay it and learn that there was a bunch of Canadian customers that were filling their shopping cart, but because of export restrictions, they couldn't sell this per certain product. So instead of them giving them alternatives, 
it, said, it gave up some you know, crappy message no. that said, no, you can't do this. <laughs> and they left, never to come back. <laughs> Leave my website. No, you can't buy from us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great customer pull. But yeah. Tea Leaf enabled that wow. to get resolved very, very quickly, paid for itself inside of the first quarter. So that, that's the kind of stuff that we're seeing happening. Yeah, head that off early, make another offer right exactly. away, send them on a different branch. Exactly. Okay, so that's obviously heavy retail. You seen, are you seeing an uptake in, in other? Customer service, anyone who's yeah. got customer so telco, service. Yeah, telco, insurance. Call centers, yeah. yeah big call centers, absolutely. Insurance, telcos, absolutely. Awesome, all right, how about the, um, how about the BI business? The, the, we, were, we were at the Tableau conference a few weeks ago, and maybe it was a couple months ago now, and the CEO would, anytime he talked about the, the BI business, he would slow down his cadence and talk about the traditional BI business. But the, the traditional BI business has a, is getting a bad rap. So what's, what's the reality there? What's real? What's, you know, how is it evolving um, to really be more agile and solve some of the promises that it's made over the last you know, 20 years? You know, I, 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 obviously I think ISVs are, um, they're taking much, much more care in understanding that the user experience of those platforms is extremely important. Mm. Um, and we've seen a tremendous evolution in the ease of use of the products. We've seen a tremendous evolution in the integration of the product. So now are you not just doing you know, traditional reporting and dashboards, but now being able to do predictive and do planning and social and have that all integrated under one user experience has made this um, um, much more consumable by a larger percent of IT professionals and not just the PhDs out mm -hmm. there. So I think the simplification of the platforms, the integration of the platforms, and the robustness of the functions that are being provided has really started to enable this to uh, reach a larger, larger percent of uh, the user base. Darren, I want to ask you a little bit more uh, data on what you've seen in the field. Obviously, with big data analytics, it's so intoxicating because you know, there, uh, there is the tea leaf. You can look at the tea leaf, great example. Social business, it's a no-brainer. Hey, we got to be more social, it's the future. I mean, can't debate that. But under the hood, Cloud, mobile, this is, these are real issues, right? So take us, unpack under the hood. Okay. What are customers doing? Are they going hybrid cloud? Are they saying, hey, you know, I'm going to stay on-premise. They're just buying more servers. You know, they'll pr throw more, more iron at the, at the problem. And then mobile, how does that tie in with BYOD, those things? So those are kind of things that are, I've been talking about, not at this conference, right. but give us a peek at what's going on there. Yeah. Are the proposals end-to-end? -end? Are the POs being cut and kind of piecemeal? Yep. So let's talk about mobility first. So mobility is, there's some real interesting dynamics there. What we're seeing is a lot of the mobility projects are actually being driven out of the line of business. So what you have is you have these departments or lines of business that have um, a sub-enterprise budget, I'll call it, and they have skunk work type projects where they say, I've got to deploy this mobile application, and they go ahead and do so. Only to find out that down the line, they run into problems around security, around mobile device management, about deploying multiple applications. They're stuck on the plane without going through TSA. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so then what happens is now they go you get to- get kicked uh, off the plane. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, they got to go back to the enterprise yeah. and they got to say, I need help. And so now there's um, customers then having to kind of backpedal and figure out, hey, we've got to invest in some mobile enterprise application platform to simplify everything around the, the mobile application development, the mobile application deployment, the security, the MDM, remote wipes, all those kinds of things. So you see the line of business essentially dragging IT and the enterprise kicking and screaming and then you know, having to force them get in after the fact. We're also seeing from the mobility perspective um, still a lot of custom app development because you know, mm -hmm. these departments, they don't have a budget to invent, invest in an enterprise application platform, so they end up um, you know, doing you know, phone gap or custom device specific development. Um, from an analytics on the mobile device, we actually just hosted 100 customers last night in an event where we demonstrated the use of Android, iOS, iPad devices, receiving alerts around um, uh, certain KPIs reaching thresholds and being able to have a CEO drill in from his iPad and actually review you uh, did that here. You did that here, yep. Did it last night. We hosted 100 customers demonstrating this and reviewing from his iPad actual reports, being able to mark up some, after doing some what-if analysis and whatnot, mark it up, send it off to his analyst asking some questions. His analyst going in, 
doing some social analytics to drill in to really understand what's happening, do some planning, create some products, and then, and then emailing that back, and him being, being able to receive the response on his Droid device, his Android device. So we're seeing mobile um, as really just an extension of existing applications, but it's the price of entry. If you're not paying attention to mobility, um, you're going to have a disappointing how about customer cloud? set. How about cloud? So cloud. Cloud, um, we are seeing the commoditization and consumerization of certain IT applications. And what I mean by that, there are certain uh, applications that customers are comfortable putting a black box around and pushing it out in the cloud because there's just not real value in, in implementing variants of that and the cost of upgrading that in the future. For example, e-commerce, mm -hmm. right? Everyone used to have to do e-commerce on their own premise. Now what we're seeing is a lot of customers really taking a close look at, do I really need a custom shopping cart? Do I really need a custom catalog? You know, if it does 80% of it's what I need. It's public information. It is, yeah, do I There's really? base security, Bob exactly. wire, no big deal. Exactly. It gets hacked, to just reboot another instance. From an analytics in the cloud perspective, we're not seeing as much comfort level yet. Yeah, because people are putting private information That's in my stuff, and, man. Yeah. That's my stuff, and I'm, I'm really, and critical stuff. And so I think there's uh, a little bit slower to let that go let into the cloud. Let me ask you a question on that, because the conventional wisdom would suggest, or would infer from that statement, that cloud is perceived as less secure than my on-premise. I talk to a lot of people and they say, well, you know what, cloud is actually more secure than my on-premise. Well, know? a high percentage of breaches <laughs> yeah. are done from within, inside your firewall, right? Right, right exactly. <laughs> we could talk about that for a long time and make the, you could make a good case for the cloud mm -hmm. in terms of security. The, the issue when you peel back the onion is oftentimes that the cloud service providers' uh, policies, the, the security doc, uh, the SLAs are just different. They're maybe not worse or better, they're different yep. than what I have internally. Is that what's going on here, or is it just the maturity of the cloud is, is not there? The SLAs are actually are worse? I wonder, what's your take on all no, that? I think the SLAs are fine. I think, frankly, a lot of it is emotional. Yeah. There's just a gut comfort level of having my stuff close mm -hmm. to me and under my control, and ha putting critical information under someone else's control is an emotional so challenge. That'll attenuate over time, don't yep, you think? I agree. Darren, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. Darren Nelson, uh, he's on the, in the trenches, top IBM uh, partner with Sirius Solutions. A final, final word for you, I'll let you get this in. Um, are people buying heavily now, POs, end of the year budget flush, um, or are they looking at next year as a positive outlook? What's your, just give us a sentiment of, is it people still, they think it's not going to implode, is it going to be great? What's the outlook for 2014? Are people, we're hearing a little bit of, budget flushing going on at the end of this year. What, what's your take? We're also that? hearing uncertainty, right? Because of the, yeah. you know, the government, government shut down. Government shutting down, so. Obamacare, what all do you this see? stuff. I mean. If that's happening, we're not seeing it. I, I mentioned we tripled our business in a three year period. We had a pretty high baseline to build from. Year to date through Q3, we're up another 30% year over year. And we're looking like we're going to crush it with our Q4 pipeline. So uh, nice. I, I hope that continues and I hope the naysayers are, are wrong yeah, because we're, we're not seeing that. Excellent. Okay, we'll be right back uh, here live in the queue after the short break. <laughs>